Hey everybody, today is a video on my new series where we do overviews of the XR series mixers. We're going to look specifically at the XR Edit software and talk about everything in specific tabs so that you know what you're looking at at any given time. And we're gonna start doing that right now. Let's go! So today we're gonna to be talking about the Sends tab and let's just jump right into it. As usual, we have our channel label where we can right click and name this whatever we want, or we can select a predefined name and we can choose a color scheme. Let's do our black on red. And then right below that, we have our input meter, which shows the amount of signal coming into the physical input on the mixer and then shows how much we have adjusted the gain. So let me just give you an example. Let's go to input. Let's bring up the gain here and come back to the sends tab. So you can see that we have a lot of signal here now and the fader has no effect. This is only affected by the gain of the channel. So now before we actually talk about everything that's in this window, I actually want to jump all the way to the other side and talk about this little globe icon. You can see right now it's highlighted blue and it says changes affect all channels. If I turn it off, then obviously changes would not affect all channels. But what does that mean? So let's turn it on. This setting only affects what we call our tap points, which is the top part of this window. It does not affect the amount of signal we're sending anywhere. It only affects our tap points. So what does that mean? So let's say I change microphone one's tap point for bus one to pre-fader and I change microphone one's tap point for bus two to input with this highlighted I've now made that same change for all channels let's look as I mouse across you can see that everything is the same now let's come back put this back to default if I deselect this but let's say I change my effect to send tap point to post EQ instead of post fader, I have now only made that change for the highlighted channel. If I look at channel two, it's still at default, three default, 13 default, but back to the one I had selected when I made the change, that is the only one that has changed. So please just be aware, if you want to make a specific change to a bus or an effect send, and you want that to go across all channels, this needs to be on, which it is by default. But if you only want to make that change for one channel, you need to turn this off. Right, so now let's turn this back on and let's talk about the top section in this window, which is our tap points. This tells the mixer where to take signal in our signal chain for each bus or effect send that we want to send signal to. And what does each one mean? Let's go through them. Input means you are taking signal right after the physical input and the gain adjustment of the channel. Pre-EQ means you get your input and gain adjustment plus your gate tab. Post-EQ means you get input, gate, and EQ. Pre-fader means you get input, gate, EQ, but this fader has no effect on what is happening in the bus. So any signal you send to the bus using your sends here or your sends here, this fader will have no effect. When you are in pre-fader, the amount of signal you decide to send either through this mechanism or by selecting the bus and changing it here, that amount of signal going to the bus will never change where if you change it to post fader, anything you do now while you're mixing for front of house, this will change the amount of level that is also going out to the bus you've chosen to be post fader. So pre fader, this fader for the main mix has no effect. Post fader, it absolutely does. So post fader not only gets input from this channel strip fader, but it also gets everything above it. So you get the input tab and gain adjustment. You get the gate tab and its effects. You get the EQ tab and any adjustments you've made there. And you get the compression tab and any adjustments you've made there, as well as the main channel strip fader. And of course, the final selection here is subgroup. This allows you to turn one of your buses 
into a group where you can combine multiple channels, usually channels that are similar, like maybe all of your drums or all of your vocals. And you can set your individual channel levels here like normal, but then you use the subgroup fader to control the overall level of that whole group of instruments. So for example, let's say we turned bus one into a subgroup and we were going to use this for drums. And let's say that our first four channels were all drums. So we would highlight each channel and click the on button that has now added it to the subgroup. Do that for each channel. The other way to do this quickly is to go to the mixer tab and now you can see that group one here or uh, bus one has turned into a subgroup. Anything we click on is now part of that group. Anything we click off is removed from the group. But let's go back to the sends window. So now our overall volume, this, this mix that we've already aligned, this is how we want everything to sound in the mix. We can now select bus one and this fader now controls the overall volume going out to our main mix with this one fader. However, there's something you need to do first before that will function properly. The first thing you need to do is select your bus that you made into a group, select the fader itself, go to the main tab and tell it that you want this group to go out to your main left right by turning this on. And then the next thing you need to do is go to back to your main mix select each channel that you put into your group and take it out of the main left right stereo. So now what is happening is the channels you've selected to go into your group are going out of their channel strip into the bus and then that bus itself is going out to the main left right mix. If you don't do these two things your subgroup will not function properly. Something else to note on this main tab for your subgroup is that you can now pan your whole subgroup left or right. So this will pan everything that you have in the group to the left or to the right, depending on what you've done here. If you had stereo channels and you had panned them individually left or right in your mix, and you needed to retain that stereo left, right, you would need to group a couple of buses together so that they were a stereo subgroup. To do that, you would choose your group. So let's say bus one in this case, again, select it here. And this time you would go to the channel tab and you would select stereo link. This would now link your bus with the next one in line. So bus one will link to two, bus three to four and five to six. You cannot link two to three or four to five. It doesn't work that way. But any stereo panning you have of your channels individually will now be retained inside your stereo subgroups. Once you've created subgroups, you can also now insert things like effects or you can turn compressors on or EQs for the group as a whole. This might be something that you want to do for something like drums where you want to put a compressor on all the drums together. So you would then go to the subgroup that you've made Again, select it on the main subgroup fader, but then you can go to your compressor tab or your EQ tab and you can make adjustments here that will affect the entire group. And then the last thing we have to look at here is the output meter. This is the same as it is on most other tabs where the meter on the left shows the level at the physical input after the gain adjustments. And this here is the output meter, showing the output after any adjustments you've made with your tabs. Well, there isn't really anything here that will change the output meter, but it's just good to know what this is. It shows the output to your main mix. And of course, everything here is the same for the effect sends as it is for the buses, with the exception of the subgroup, which obviously you can't create on the effect faders. These effect sends are these buttons here. So this is how much signal you are sending to the effect instead of how much signal you are bringing back from the effect with these faders on the main left right mix. But they operate in the same way and these tap points are the same as they are for the tap points over here. The global change button also applies to the effects. So there you go. Now you know what you're looking at whenever you have the sends tab open. I hope this was interesting 
entertaining, or educational. And if it was any of those three things, please like and share and subscribe. You can also check us out on Patreon, or you can join the channel down below or even do a super thanks down below if anything we do on the channel is useful to you. Huge thanks to everybody who's already contributed in all of those ways. You've made a big difference to how we operate. Thank you. And until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quickies. Bye, everybody.